My name is Micah Copeland, and this is Substitute Teacher Research Needs to Be More Than What Substitutes Lack. When I worked as a substitute teacher, sub, I said, anyone that wants to be a full-time licensed teacher should have to substitute teach for one year as a licensure requirement. Every teacher I told that to looked at me, horrified, muttering how no one would become teachers. Substitute teaching, often called subbing, is hard, and it is a career deserving more respect, and teachers may unconsciously know this. I wanted to draw attention to the lack of research about subs, not only because I was a sub and wanted to know if my experiences were considered normal, but also because of how important the subbing is. Subbing is often considered a temporary job for people across the U.S., and the transitory nature of the job creates pockets of knowledge waiting to be researched with a diverse participant pool. If you went to public school, you encountered countless subs from kindergarten through 12th grade. Subs are cogs in the greater public education machine. Without enough subs in a school, the school's flow is disrupted. Sub requirements differ across the U.S., and only a few articles I could find talked about the nuances of the job. Much like this graphic on screen, my sub training consisted of a single two-hour presentation where the person who hired me and every other sub for the year very rapidly went over every job expectation. From what I remember about this whirlwind presentation, there were about 60 slides just packed with information in small fonts I could not read from my seat in the middle of the room. In the Ashford Library, I could not find a single peer-reviewed article about what training for subs tends to look like. And I have a theory as to why. There are so many school districts in the U.S., around 13,000, that each district might have completely different training requirements from each other. This is an actual picture of my actual substitute certification. To receive this certificate, I was required to pass an FBI background check, upload my job history, resume, transcripts, give three references, pass a personality assessment, and pay $90. In all, the application for the certificate took two hours. In the state of Colorado, there are two kinds of sub-certificates, three and five year, but other states have one, three, and five year certificates. Why the state to state disparity? It all comes down to education requirements. In the state of Colorado, I had to have a bachelor's degree to apply to become a substitute teacher, meaning that I have the same level of education on average as the teachers I'd be subbing for. However, this is not always the case. According to the National Education Association, nine states, including DC, require a bachelor's degree, six states require about 60 college credits, 19 states require a high school diploma or GED, two states require less than a high school diploma, and 15 states had no data about substitute education requirements. For a few states, the NEA indicated that sub comp compensation was tied to the sub's level of education. The more education a sub has, the more money the sub gets. The NEA stated some states pay subs as little as $35 a day. The average pay for substitute teachers is around $85 a day. But st states decide how much they are willing to pay subs. Once a sub enters the job field, it can be difficult to leave. Sub pay is not usually something one could live off of safely. Richardson and colleagues found that being unable to pay bills was linked to higher rates of depression, anxiety, alcohol abuse, stress, and lower, all, lower overall mental health in adults. In the Ashford Library, searching substitute teachers yielded 43,359 results. But when I limited the results to peer-reviewed and scholarly sources only, the results dropped to 7,835, 962 articles being from the last 10 years. There are not enough people doing research about subs and subbing. And it makes sense why when you consider how much prejudices exist towards subs. At the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned how I talked to teachers about a subbing requirement for licensure of all full-time teachers. When I asked why some teachers reacted so violently to the thought of subbing for a year, they listed the negative stereotypes attributed to subs. Subs gained a bad reputation because they are often seen as glorified babysitters for the licensed teachers of class. But who gave subs that reputation? Let us first look at licensed teachers. Licensed teachers generally have a reputation fostered over decades of the public misunderstanding the necessary duties a teacher performs during the school day for students. The same attitude the public has toward licensed teachers, being lazy, incompetent, should not be paid that much, are the same attitudes that licensed teachers have shown to have towards subs. Licensed teachers and subs are both in short supply across the U.S., so there is a lot of strain among all groups in making a classroom run smoothly. Licensed teachers simply may not know the education certification requirements subs undergo before entering classrooms. Subs and licensed teachers are working towards the same goal, however, to get paid, same, towards the same goal, however, to get paid while helping students in school. 
There is plenty of research to show that anything less than a licensed teacher is hindering for student academic performance. Also, both when there is no licensed teacher nor sub in the classroom, the student's academic performance suffers. But if you ask students how they feel about subs, students love subs because subs signal a break in the regular classroom drud drudgery. Who is currently writing research on subs? Much of the current research seems to be written from a pro-teacher, pro-student, and anti-sub perspective. The articles I could find that were written by subs discussed how hard the job can be because of the huge lack of safety and stability a sub faces at work. Worrying about safety is not something that immediately came to mind when I began subbing. Then I had a desk thrown at me. I had a student sexually harass me. I had a student threaten me with violence, and I had a teacher tell me I was not allowed to eat in the staff lounge because I was not real staff. Subs usually do not know what kind of environment they are walking into until they get to the day's assignment. What's, when subs feel absences, students might take the opportunity to undermine the sub's authority or fail to show even baseline politeness to the sub because they are not real teachers. There's a lack of safety provided to subs during their subbing that licensed teachers may not be aware of. Natural disasters are not something that can be explicitly planned for, just to have girls for. However, teachers are explicitly trained on how to handle the events of a natural disaster with students to keep them calm, but subs may not be. Having knowledge of what to do in case of natural disasters is important regardless of the disaster. Most workplaces have emergency response booklets, schools being no exception, but an emergency response booklet is only good if the booklet can be found. Drills and evacuation plans are something to be premeditated and those plans need to be disseminated across the employee pool. When the adults know what to do, the students feel better about what is going on, that, and that includes subs. Any information about what happens during drills and evacuation should be in plain view for subs and possibly included as a standard part of the sub plan left by the licensed teacher. After a school shooting in May 2018, where two subs died and another barricaded himself in a room with 24 students, a fourth sub started out fourth sub started advocating for safe, more safety training to protect one of the most vulnerable populations in public schools, subs. Often the emphasis is on keeping the students safe in the building, but sometimes it might be the students who are the ones trying to cause their teachers or subs harm. A fire or a busted water pipe do not act with menace when they happen, but the same cannot be said about school shooters. So how can teachers, administrators, and researchers help subs be and feel safe at work. This may seem so simple, but having a seating chart with updated pictures of each student can immensely help students see the sub as an authority and help the sub keep track of all these students they see in a day. Students are like fairies. If you know their name, you have power over them. Calling a student out by name helps the student and sub maintain classroom management. Safety plans are not just how the school responds to emergencies. If a student has seizures and that information is not left for the sub, that puts both the student and the sub at risk. Subs should not be given access to all student safety plans because the students are allowed their privacy. However, leaving a sub to navigate avoidable disasters without proper guidance from the licensed teacher could be dangerous. Relating to seating charts and safety plans is how a classroom is laid out. Based on this picture, if a teacher said an important bit of information was, was located on the shelves or in the storage areas, but did not specify which shelves or storage closets, I would have to waste valuable pre preparation time to search for that information. Explicitly stating where items are located can help a sub understand how their day is structured and shows the teacher has compassion for subs. Subs do not have control of much of their day during a sub job, and part of the reason is that there is hardly any research about subs by subs or from a pro-sub standpoint. Because of the lack of research about the positives that subs bring to classrooms or the lack of research about how schools and teachers can negatively affect subs, all avenues are open for research. Most of us spend 13 years in public ed education and we probably interacted with subs 100 times or more. Did any of us stop to think about the negative stereotypes about subs that could hurt subs? Did any of us stop to think of, about not leaving scene charts about how not leaving seating charts could leave subs vulnerable? Maybe, but I know I did not until I became a sub. Subs are integral to the daily workings of a school and no one should be treating subs like they're anything less than valuable. Thank you for your time.